just we didn't only just do them I went to a bunch of them because um, first of all GRGR was Gail's baby but we were involved Michelle Jaffe was involved I was involved and um, you know the whole start of revolutionary records and all of that I was the producer of Gail's record so come here go away so that had was all mixed in together and it was kind of born out of that so First of all, one of my favorite memories of that is just the founding of all of that and the and the, the artwork that went back and forth for the flyers and all of and all of that. What are we going to call it? What are we going to call it? What are we going to do? The the first the first flyer that had our bios and it was just you and me. I remember the first time and um, because I remember the bio being just you and me. I don't even remember what we were called. If we were called Low Boy at the time or Loud Life at the time or not. Nor Lorraine Farrow and, and you. I don't remember exactly what it was, was but um, so it was exciting. That's that's a good memory, even before the the uh, the actual gigs. Can you remember anything that you that you wanna? No, I just remember some of the venues and that it was fun playing with all the different uh, girl fronted bands. But really, for me, the most fun part is always just playing with her because, uh, as you'll see at the show when you come. That's an electrifying thing. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Okay, thanks. Well, loud Life doesn't really exist on a day-to-day -day basis now because I don't live here. I live in China, so we can't really be playing shows all the time. So uh, we, you know, we're still here now, we're still... We're still getting radio play, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great. Thing. <laughs> we uh, and we're happy. We're happy to have a chance to play uh, this show. It just so happens that at the moment I'm in town, and so I was very excited to hear that my visit would coincide with this concert. Yeah, so, the tenth anniversary is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to. I'm going to enjoy playing with Lorraine and also playing with uh, many old friends and uh, hopefully some new ones. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we've we've been doing our own things. She's Lorraine. Maybe can tell you she's busy with a lot of great work and playing and, and other stuff. And I'm in China. I'm doing some music there, but also doing some non-music related business. So uh, yeah. But I've been doing quite a bit. I have a band uh, named Trebella, which is a, an Italian American female trio, and we travel all over the place. We've been on the Jimmy Kimmel stage. We've uh, played Reno this year. We, 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 I just got back from Florida. Um, we're doing quite a bit of uh, entertaining everywhere. And I do a lot of festivals, Italian festivals and what have you. But we also did the Copacabana just a few weeks ago. And um, and we've been, so we've been busy. We've, I've been busy. That's That started, I think, in 2006, 2007. And I was a founder of that band too. So that's a great band too. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Very, it's it's a lot of fun. Completely yeah. different. Yeah. And uh, you know, and we do everything from actually Italian real Italian old Italian songs to dance music. And we even have now the latest things that we have an original single out uh, called Kisses in the Dark and in Italian it's called Bacci Nello Scuro. And it's charting. The fun it's the weirdest thing. It's just uh, a friend of mine wrote it and then I translated it and co-wrote it and then the girls I did some vocal I do a lot of vocal arrangements for Trebella things I also work for a karaoke company now so I sing a lot of um, the guide vocals for that uh, I, think I, I think I've heard some of those yeah <laughs> probably in China I think China. I have actually I think I have <laughs> probably in China yeah. and um let's It'll be a surprise that we're doing it. That's right. Exactly. Where's your surprise? We, it's going to be a complete surprise to us as to what we're doing yet. <laughs> we actually asked around and uh, to find out if there are any requests. Michelle wants Cradle to Crypt. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll discuss we it. We have to discuss that. <laughs> so, um, but also, 
I don't know. If there, it, how could it be a surprise if we tell you now? So I have a, one thing in the works that I would like to flesh out with you before, because uh, it'll be a surprise to you if that's the case. So, <laughs> so yeah. Sure, why not? The more women, the better. <laughs> in music. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, typical. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It's always good, you know, in the music business to have uh, people getting together. Uh, you know, it doesn't even matter whether it's women or this or that, but uh, people with a common, common uh, backgrounds and common goals working together to do something bigger than themselves is always, is always a good thing, especially in the music industry. It's, it's hard for people to operate on their own, so I think... Uh, this organization and other ones like it certainly certainly are good for the musicians and the people who are their fans. I think that for for me, I I completely I think that GRGR is was always a really great idea, and specifically because it promoted rock music. I mean, there was other kind of music, but mostly. It is folk or what have you, but mostly it was rock music, rock chicks. And if you look around on the, and listen around on the radio, you don't hear many rock chicks on the radio. And so the idea that they got an outlet, we've gotten an outlet to uh, to have audiences because there is a demographic and there is an audience. I'd like to see them have a real record label. I'd like to see uh, put them putting out, uh, to putting out some, maybe even some compilation albums, some al some signing some people, and uh, finding finding our own niche niche in um, in rock and pop radio. I would love to see that. Um, I would love to see us all rich. That would be really wonderful. Uh, what else? Yeah, I'd like to see you know some of the current members uh, still there and growing as well as uh, some new blood. Right, right. And I would like to see, I would like to see it more of a, uh, less of a just um, a centralized place, you know, uh, where it's just New York or what have you. I know that there have been bands that they've toured, that have toured with GRGR that have not come from New York, but for the most part, it's all centralized here, and it would be great to have them branch out where there would be actual offices, actual, you know, heads of different uh, places like maybe Tennessee, maybe um, California, maybe, um, I don't know, where, wherever, and I would like to see that. That would, that would be great. I would really mostly like to see it become some kind of a subsidiary of a, of a big label, of a big conglomerate. know uh, whether I'm qualified to give them any advice. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, no, I, I, it doesn't matter if they're young girls or young boys or right. middle-aged girls right. or boys. I think that the advice I give about music, generally speaking, is that uh, if you love music and if you love to play, then uh, you need to work really hard on your art. You need to practice a lot. You need to find good people to work with, and um, just try to maintain your integrity. And um, if something sounds uh, if something sounds off to you, then just you know be careful. If you if you really are a young girl, uh, you need a trusted counsel from people who are older and more experienced. Of course, you have to make your own choices, but. Uh, know, grow yourself and protect yourself at the same time. Right. Um, can I alter that question to say, who would I, what would I give advice to women of mm -hmm. any age? Because to me, it's more important to give, it's as important to give older women um, this advice as well as younger women, because I think that the older women don't feel like they have enough time 
that if they decide they want it, they love it now. Oh, they wasted all this time and now they really shouldn't do it. Oh, no, no, that isn't true. It isn't true at all. So for me, the advice that I would give women across the board from, you know, young, young women to older women is make a lot of mistakes. And the only way you can make an awful lot of mistakes is to really risk. Lita Ford, <laughs> I'm trying to think, who <laughs> I would like to see, like, real young rockers and really old rockers, like, re uh, line up together. Like, the women from Heart, I would love that, that would be great. Uh, I'd love to see Cindy Lauper do it. I would love to see, and then I would love to see, you know, I would love to see Stephanie German Lady Gaga when she's doing her real rock stuff. I would love to see that part of the bit. I would love to see them side by side as long as I can sing with them both. That would be fine. And um, who else? <laughs> who else? Who else is a young rocker? I don't know. That sounds like a pretty good lineup. Ah, there's got to be some other ro young, young rockers. Who do I? Oh, well, you know, Adele is supposed to be a real rocker. I wouldn't say she is. I wouldn't say she is. And um, I would say she's more a soul singer. And, uh, and that's, that's fine, too. But she'd have to up her game, man, performance-wise, if she was going to do the... To, I got, we got some women in, in, uh, that are indie rockers that, that performance-wise would wipe the floor with, with Adele's performance. So I, I love you, Adele, but, man. So um, that I would love to see. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. It's exciting to, oh, Chrissy Hine. I would love to see Chrissy Hine. <laughs> um, how about uh, Stevie Nicks? I would love to see, like, uh, those kinds. Of, I would love to see Annie Lennox. That would be it. I would love to see the lineup be Annie Lennox and me. <laughs> That's what I would love. <laughs> I'd, pay, I'd pay to see that. Yeah. Man, oh, man, I would love that. water <laughs> all Is he who believes and I wonder